when you go to the dictionary portal, the first thing the system will ask is whether you allow cookies to, to be stored in your browser. These cookies uh, store the preferences that you make uh, for the languages that we'll do in a, in a second. So for now, I will allow these cookies. If you don't allow these cookies, every time you go back to the system, you will need to reselect the languages that you're interested in. Okay, so here we are in the dictionary portal. You first need to set it up. So I click on get started. And then I get to a screen where I can select the different languages that I'm interested in. So the primary dictionary language is the language that you would normally use to search in. So in this case, I will select Afrikaans, but you can use any of the four languages here. Then there are secondary languages. And the secondary languages are used to, um, for the system to search in if the word is not found in your primary language. So I will select all of these for now. And then here there's also dictionary preferences part, but we only have one dictionary, so I will leave this on. Now we can save these preferences and we can actually get to the proper um, search system. If you want to go back to the preferences to change them, you can just go back here at the top left, click on preferences and you have that screen that we just filled in. The interface language can also be changed, can change to English and to Afrikaans, so it's just the the, the, the language of the interface that, that changes. It doesn't change any uh, in any way how the system will search in the dictionary that is set under the preferences. So I'll keep this on English now. So now we can um, start searching. The search bar is here, so this is where you can type in your the word that you're interested in. If you want to search for words that have uh, characters with accents or with click sounds, uh, you can actually click on this part here. It will show a menu where you can select click sounds or letters with special characters. Uh, I set my primary language to English, so that means that I'll be searching for English words. So let's search for the word dog. Uh, I just type in the letters and you can see that the system already recognizes that the word dog is there, the word dogs is also in the dictionary. So I can actually click on the word dogs, for example, and it will search uh, that specific word in the dictionary. You see that because this frame is here, you see that results were found. I can click on the dictionary and I see the results for the word dogs. So here you see the uh, words in Eastern and Western dialects. The next one is the IPA, the uh, way of how you pronounce these words also in Eastern and Western dialects. There's a Nama translation, an Afrikaans translation, a local Afrikaans uh, translation, a synonym, uh, the English translation, and different sounds. So I can just click on these sounds to, li uh, to listen how this word is pronounced. Hi. And in this case there are three different recordings, so we can have uh, uh, three ways of listening to this. Okay, so that's essentially how the system works. Let's try a few more uh, words. So I now search for a word that's not really in the dictionary, but it is part of a word in the primary language in the dictionary. So it gives a recommendation, the system gives a recommendation. I can now click on this and I will get the result related to that specific word. Again, I click on the frame to open the results and in this case there are actually two entries in the dictionary. So I can again click on these, I see the new word, pronunciation, the Nama translation, the Afrikaans, the, Afri the local Afrikaans translation and there is also some additional information about the word in uh, Afrikaans, Nama, and English. And again, I can listen to the sound. Then the second entry essentially has the same kind of information. Uh, the word, the translations, and here is a sound as well. Now you could already see I typed in a word, but the word didn't perfectly match. Uh, so in this case it gave a recommendation. I can also use wildcards to search for 
words or entries in a dictionary that contain a particular word. So let's let's try that now. So if I will be searching for the word jackal, I might not find something, but I can use wildcards. Uh, so with this asterisk that's above the, the 8, so shift 8, I can write the word and I can have a wildcard before and end of the word. So this indicates that some letters might occur before the word I'm searching for, but also some letters might occur after the word that I'm looking for. So if I search now, I will see different results here. So this one is a result where there are additional words, or sorry, additional letters before the word jackal. But here you see that there are letters after the word jackal. So that, that relates to the wildcard before and after the word jackal. And this one is again some letters before the word jackal. So using the wildcards, I can search more in the dictionary to find other words that might be um, related to this. So again, I can open that. In this case, we uh, only have one recording um, and we don't have a lot of additional uh, information. There is no local Afrikaans word uh, for this. Koro. Same here. There's some more information uh, recording again. So that's essentially how the system works. Um, what I can now also show is if we go back to the preferences, I select another primary language um, and I set English as my secondary language. So now the idea is that I will be searching in Mu, but I will actually search in English, just like I searched just now. So in this case, you will see I will get results, the same results, but the words that are shown here now are the Mu words because that's my primary language. But the entry that I search uh, that I searched for is exactly the same. So you see, the uh, black back jackal was found here as well. So the searching was done in the English, but because my primary language was in Mu, I get the Mu words here, and that's essentially how the system works.